think it was Mark Chestnut that sang, I'm going through the big D and don't mean Dallas. I can't believe what the judge had to tell us. I got the Jeep and she got the palace. I'm going through the big D and I don't mean Dallas. The whole song's about a broken relationship. He's only been married just a few months and now they're getting a divorce. Divorce is such a hard word. Divorce is such a hard thing. It tears apart families. It tears apart churches. It hurts children. It hurts husbands. It hurts wives. It hurts in-laws, grandparents, and aunts and uncles. It's not what God had designed. In fact, if I can preempt what I'm going to say and what we're going to read from Jesus. Satan, the devil, loves to divide. He loves to break up relationships. He did that in the very beginning between Adam and Eve and God. And that's what he's done throughout his career, if you will. And divorce is just one of the ways in which he tries to destroy relationships because if he can destroy our relationships here he can get between us and God and that is his ultimate goal now let's go to our text Jesus is going to set a standard here and it's one that the disciples are going to grasp and I want to deal with this as gently as possible in the few minutes that we have together let's go to Matthew chapter 19 beginning at verse 1. Now it happened when Jesus had finished these words, he departed from Galilee and came to the region of Judea beyond the Jordan. And large crowds followed him, and he healed them there. And some of the Pharisees came to Jesus, testing him and saying, again, the Pharisees are trying to challenge him, getting to say something that's going to upset the people or go against the law. So they ask, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any reason at all? Some suggest there was discussion among the the leaders of the Jews at that time about when a man could ask for a divorce. Could it be something simple or did it have to be something grand? So is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any reason? And Jesus answered and said, Have you not read that he who created them from the beginning made them male and female? And for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one. What therefore God has joined together, let no man separate. Then they said to him, Why then did Moses give her a command, uh, give her command to give her a certificate of divorce and send her away? And he said, Because of your hardness of heart, Moses permitted you to divorce your wives. But from the beginning, it has not been this way. And I say to you, whoever divorces his wife except for sexual immorality and marries another woman commits adultery. The disciples said to him, if the relationship of the man with his wife is like this, it is better to not marry. And he said, not all men can accept this statement, but only those to whom it has been given. For there are eunuchs who are born that way from their mother's womb, and there are eunuchs who are made eunuchs by men. And there are also eunuchs who made themselves eunuchs for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. He who is able to accept this, let him accept it. And the Pharisees are trying to, to get Jesus to say something that's going to turn the crowds against him. Trying to get him to say something that's going to cause a division. But Jesus just answers with simple truth. When God designed marriage, and God designed marriage, in the very beginning with Adam and Eve, God's plan is one man and one woman for life. Anything other than that is violating God's plan. So they, Jesus then says, well, then why did the the disciples then, excuse me, the Pharisees then say, why did Moses allow for it then? And Jesus said, well, you're going to do it. So Moses allowed it to protect the women. But that's not the way God planned it. God's plan is one man and one woman for life. So if you want to do this right, with the exception of the other person committing adultery, you stay married. 
you don't divorce. Because that's not God's plan. You say, Scott, that's very hard to say that. How do you get that from that? I get that because of what the disciples say. The disciples' response says they get it. Lord, if that's the way it's supposed to be, it's probably better that we don't get married. Is you've got to stay with that one person and then it's best to stay single. <laughs> Jesus' answer is, well, yes. Not everybody can accept this. There are people who have who won't marry for different reasons. One of those reasons is the kingdom of God. Because that's what's important, isn't it? When we talk about marriage, divorce, and remarriage, emotions run high. And the questions come about different possible scenarios. Some real, some imagined. And as kindly as I know how, I think the answer lies in Jesus' closing statement. There are some who have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake. My question to you and to me is what is more important? My physical pleasure and my marital status here on earth or my relationship with God now and forever. Will we choose the kingdom over us? That gives more weight to what Jesus says when he says, if a man will follow me, let him first deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. That's the question and the answer. What are we willing to deny ourselves? To follow God. Let's go to God in prayer. Dear God, I know as, as this lesson is looked at, that there are those who hear this who have had and have broken relationships, broken marriages. Father, I know that you are a forgiving God. And Father, I pray for those who have gone through those hardships, that they will find peace and comfort in you. And that in finding peace and comfort in you, they will find that you are their strength. And you are their source of contentment and peace and happiness here on earth. And in you for eternity. Father, forgive us when we fall short and help us to not let the devil have a foothold to divide us, but help us work for forgiveness and for unity, for reconciliation, for relationship, and most of all, relationship with you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you again for joining me and allowing me to join you as we spend time in God's word. I do look forward to these, and I hope you do as well. Until the next time we're together, my prayer is, as always, is that God will bless your day.